ディスカバーユアクラウン新しいクラウン始まる Hello, everyone. Akio Toyoda. Even though we are here today to spotlight the launch of a new model, we arranged 15 generations of the crown for you to see on the way in. Some of you may have wondered why. Let me begin by telling you a crown story woven by successive chief engineers. The crown's origin can be traced back. To Toyota's founding era. Ninety years ago, our founder, Kichiro Toyoda, decided to take on the challenge of entering the automobile business. Driving the ambitious dream was his philosophy of enriching the lives of the Japanese people by creating a passenger car for the masses. Production of Toyota's longed for domestic passenger car finally began in January 1952, 15 years after the company's founding. It was Keitro himself who named the vehicle Crown. Appointed as the Crown's chief engineer was Kenya Nakamura. Driven by a strong sense of mission, Nakamura put all his energy into developing the crown. He had the conviction to do what he thought was right, despite strong opposition and criticism. No latest technology was ignored in its creation, including a double wishbone suspension for the front wheels. Reminiscing about the launch, Nakamura said, It was like all of Japan was in the midst of a festival. When I apologized for something that wasn't good enough, customers consoled me by saying, It's just a tiny scratch, no big deal. It was like the whole country was giving me a push. In 1957, the Crown participated in an Australian rally, making it the first Japanese car to race in an international rally. Soon after, Toyota took another bold step by exporting the vehicle to the United States, making its first passenger car export. Then in 1959, Toyota opened its Motomachi plant specifically for producing passenger cars. Building a mass production plant with an annual capacity of 60,000 units was a major decision given that Japan's passenger car market was still in its infancy. For Toyota, all its post-war challenges started with the first-generation crown. I would say that that car symbolized Japan's recovery and growth momentum. The third generation crown was launched in 1967 when personal vehicle ownership began to take off in Japan. Kameo Uchiyamada took the reins as chief engineer after experiencing the second generation car's development under the tutelage of Nakamura. Looking at cars in a parking lot, Uchiyamada noticed that lighter colors seemed to be gaining in popularity. Anticipating that more people would be using a crown as their personal vehicle, he decided to make the third generation available in white. Widely known as the white crown, that model became a driving force in Japan's modernization. That was the crown's foundational period. Over the next two decades, the crown matured into a presence sought out by customers. Launched in 1971, the fourth generation daringly adopted bold styling for a new image in anticipation of intensified competition from foreign cars. However, partly due to quality issues, 
sales ended up being a struggle. The lesson learned from this model and taken to heart to this day was this. The Crown must first and foremost meet customers' core needs. From that point on, successive chief engineers pursued Crown development while being careful to balance innovation and customer experience, expectations. That approach to car making bore fruit in the seventh and eighth generations, led by chief engineer Kenichi Imaizuni. With its someday a crown tagline, the seventh generation became a status symbol in Japan, followed by the eighth generation, which achieved the highest sales volume in crown history. I joined Toyota in 1984, and my first workplace was the Motomachi plant. I was involved in the production preparation for the eighth generation, and I still remember how everyone took pride in their work. In the 1980s, the crown had undoubtedly become Japan's flagship. However, its growth peaked there. It entered hard times from the ninth generation onward. To start with, the Crown's positioning within Toyota changed. In 1989, Toyota introduced the Lexus LS in Japan as the Toyota Celsior. That change was a major turning point in the history of of the Crown, which had served as Toyota's long-standing flagship. Then after Japan's bubble economy burst in 1991, the Japanese economy fell into recession, dragging down with it the demand for luxury vehicles. Moreover, competition from imports intensified. The ninth and tenth generations of the Crown faced these harsh headwinds. Chief Engineer Hiroyuki Watanabe, inheriting the role from Ima Izumi of the Someday a Crown days after working under him, came to experience both prosperous and difficult times for the Crown. From his era, the Crown entered a period of transformation. In the 2000s, Toyota accelerated its advances overseas, pursuing a greater scale in sales and production. This gradually led to prioritizing models and markets that promised larger sales and profits. With Crown sales in a steady decline, there was growing concern that the model's end might be near. This sense of crisis drove development of the 12th generation crown, launched in 2003. Mitsuhisa Kato, who headed development, said at the time, there's no way I'm going to let the crown end on my watch. With such determination, Kato took on the challenge of rebuilding the crown. He redeveloped the platform and engine from scratch to achieve world-class driving performance. At that time, I had just started driving training under Hiromu Naruse, my mentor. I still remember experiencing firsthand the driving performance of the Zero Crown. The Zero Crown indicated a new direction, a crown with advanced driving performance. In 2008, the global financial crisis struck, and I was appointed president after the company plunged into the red. Despite the difficulties this posed for our company, we persisted in taking on the challenge of transforming the crown. Let's make a car that attracts people at first glance. You can change whatever you want to do that. That's how I encourage the development team to redesign the crown. We transformed vehicle styling, renewed the vehicle platform, and honed the driving performance at the Nürburgring. 
That's how we created the 14th generation reborn crown and the 15th generation connected crown. For the past 20 years, we have explored crown's evolution while facing the challenge of the changing times. And then came the time to develop the 16th generation. To draw a comparison with Japanese history, Japan's final feudal dynasty happened to end after the 15th generation. I was resolved to do whatever it takes to create a new era for the crown. So I asked the development team, why don't we go back to our origins and seriously think about the next crown? With that, development of the 16th generation got underway. Stirred by my words, the crown team started revisiting the passions of past chief engineers. Kenya Nakamura is quoted as saying, Selling things to people with conviction means creating something that feels good in one's heart and has within it the true heart of the customer. Only when a customer gets behind the wheel of such a car will they say, this has got my attention. This is what I want to drive. The chief engineer's role is to offer cars like that to the world. This is the origin of our chief engineer system, and I believe it is also the origin of our continued efforts in making ever better cars. Two years later, the crown team has manifested a crown for the coming era. When I first saw this new crown, I said, this looks interesting. And when I got out of the car after driving it, I said, now that is a crown. Today, a new crown is born. To us, it is similar in significance to when Japan welcomed the modern age about 150 years ago. Everyone, please witness the dawn of a new era. Here, we present to you our crown for the new era. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Hiroki Nakajima, president of Toyota's in-house mid-size vehicle company overseeing the development of the new crown. Let me talk about the new crown's development story. First of all, a little more than two years ago, we were working on a partial redesign of the 15th generation crown. I shared details of the project with President Toyoda but he didn't approve it, saying, is this truly really going to result in evolution? Why don't we start thinking more seriously? Maybe we should skip a partial redesign. Looking back, I believe those words marked the beginning of the development of the 16th generation crown. We started by revisiting the passions of successive chief engineers to thoroughly re-examine what the crown was all about. 
We realized and knew that there were no fixed rules, such as those governing the shape of the car or its driving system. The only common thread was the engineer's spirit of innovation and challenge. This prompted us to, us to understand how we had tied ourselves to our predetermined rules over time. At the, same, at the time, I recalled the two messages President Toyoda had been repeating since becoming president. That is, let's make ever better cars, and let's aim to be the best in town, not the best in the world. I realized that the Crown is a long-time seller because the past chief engineers constantly challenged themselves to create an ever better Crown with a best-in-town focus in their car making to make customers happy. This caused us to drastically change our approach. We freed ourselves from fixed ways of thinking and started exploring a new crown that would achieve happiness for our customers. And that's how this crossover's development began. President Toyota gave us the green light when we showed him the vehicle's shape and packaging. Around that time, he also gave us a new task. He said, why don't we also think about a sedan? Frankly, I couldn't believe what I had just heard. But I thought it was because he saw our changes since deciding to skip a partial redesign. We had a different mindset because we returned to the Crown's origin, and he wanted us to apply that to making a sedan version. Then, in return, we proposed four different models, thinking that we also needed a hatchback and a station wagon to meet diverse needs. This is the background story. Let me once again introduce to you our four versions of the new crown. First, crossover. This crown is the result of fusing a sedan and an SUV. V. Its packaging allows for ease of entry and exit, provide a high viewpoint, and makes the vehicle easy to drive. Its driving performance, underpinned by a new hybrid system, makes an evolutionary advance, making it a sedan like no other. Next, sports. This crown is a new form of sporty SUV, a spirited and creative car with easy-to-drive packaging that offers an agile and sporty driving experience. Then, the sedan. As an orthodox sedan, this crown was developed in pursuit of quality and comfort as well as a new formal expression. It is also well suited as a chauffeured vehicle. Last, the estate. This crown as a highly functional SUV enables users to enjoy driving performance with power to spare and an active lifestyle in a mature atmosphere. The rear seats fold to form a completely flat cargo area, making this model a cross between a station wagon and an SUV. These four models are united under the crown name, starting with this now launching crown crossover. We will roll them out in succession over the next year and a half. It was no easy task to develop these four models at the same time. What made it possible were Toyota's in-house company system and the Toyota New Global Architecture, or TNGA. We couldn't present the new crown today without them. First, I'll explain a bit about our in-house company system we started in 2016. Each in-house company's members feel strongly attached to and place the highest priority on the cars they are in charge of. Our mission is to make decisions and act on our own initiative. For the mid-size vehicle company, we were able to position the crown first and foremost. 
And as president, I was able to execute the project based on my responsibility and judgment. That's what really mattered. We had to review our previous development process, thoroughly eliminate waste, and secure resources. We placed the product planning and development processes under the responsibility of a single team, promoting everyone's professionalism and communicating more closely than ever before to accomplish our mission. Next, let me now talk about the second element, TNGA. In 2012, in pursuit of making ever better cars, we started the TNGA initiative to drastically improve basic vehicle performance through the integrated development of innovative vehicle platforms and powertrains. Over the past 10 years, TNGA has matured and evolved, enabling us to turn the crown into a series. TNGA-based platforms have enhanced basic vehicle performance, styling that entices people at first glance, and drive and ride quality that makes people want to keep on enjoying it. The new Crown is even more developed. The Crown Sports, for example, offers both a stylish appearance and interior comfort and usability thanks to a new dedicated platform and larger diameter tires. TNGA powertrains, with an emphasis on direct and smooth performance, have achieved both excellent driving performance and fuel efficiency, while contributing to a lower center of gravity for vehicles. That evolution has continued. For example, in this crossover, the engine and front electric motor are directly connected, and the rear wheels have a dedicated large electric motor, achieving a powerful driving with a total output of 350 horsepower and a robust 550 newton meters of torque. This model also employs a new hybrid system that uses precise four-wheel drive control of vehicle posture. The Crown has long served as the flagship of the Toyota brand. We will put all of our energy into developing these Crown models by applying to the fullest our in-house company system and TNGA, and we will build flagship quality vehicles for our customers. Please look forward to them. Thank you very much. I believe that the philosophy of producing happiness for all has always been at the core of the crown. This flagship was, has represented Japanese success and pride, bringing together Japan's world-class technology and skilled workforce. The new crown is full of these underlying strengths. And that is why, with this series, we will once again take on the world. The new crown will be available in approximately 40 countries and regions with an expected annual sales volume of some 200,000 units. I would be more than happy if we could help restore vitality to Japan by making the crown a Japanese car loved around the world. I sincerely want the world to know what Japan's crown is all about. In closing, 
Let me say a few words to customers around the world. I'm so excited to announce today that this new Crown family of vehicles will be offered not just in Japan, but globally for the very first time. Customers from around the world will now get a chance to drive this historic Japanese nameplate born out of passion, pride, and progress. A car that could very well be our crowning achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope to create a new story for Japan's crown with all of you. Thank you so very much for your kind attention. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to start the questions and answers session. Let me introduce those who are on the podium. Akio Toyoda, President and CEO, Representative Director. Hiroki Nakajima, Mid-Size Vehicle Company President. And Simon Humphrey, Senior General Manager for Design. Now, those of you who would like to ask questions, please raise your hand so that the microphone can be brought to you. And we would like to have as many people asking questions. So with your permission, I would like to ask you to limit yourselves to one question per person, one question per person. So if you have a question, please raise your hand. So. The person right there wearing a mask, but everyone's wearing a mask. So, yes, please. Thank you very much for the presentation. Japan TV uh, reporting news re department. Ishii is my name. My question is addressed to Akio Toyoda, president. As you mentioned in the presentation today, the innovation and pushing the limits of the crown to keep that what you really have to continue thinking is carbon neutrality in aiming at achieving carbon neutrality the powertrain that you have this crown what do you think of that and going forward in the future are you going to think about a new powertrain for example the uh, battery EV crown or the hydrogen crown or hydrogen engine crown, are you thinking of having crown installed with new plat engines or powertrain? Do you have any plans or do you have any desires to do so? If so, please let us know. In trying to achieve, aiming at achieving carbon neutrality, one of the characteristics of Toyota Motor Corporation is that we are a full-line manufacturer having global network, and that's our characteristics. and that being the case, in achieving carbon neutrality, we really have to consider the energy policy of each country because it depends a great deal upon the policy of each country and that allows the carbon neutrality to be uh, achieved. Uh, from the perspective of the global company with a full lineup, the energy policy of each country and region, and also the methods and ways of achieving carbon neutrality is not limited to a single solution. And when considering that, uh, using our own full lineup of models, we have many different models, and especially we have long-time selling vehicles like the Crown. We value such long-selling vehicles very much. And how are we going to achieve uh, carbon neutrality? On the basis of um, in the context of a crown family, the series of crown, 
how can we achieve carbon neutrality must be considered. Rather than achieving carbon neutrality on all of those models, since we have in-house company system at, at Toyota, what can we do? How can we find solution in that context and how the as a company should uh, try to aim achieving that. So those two perspectives will be the focus of that. And the concrete answer will be given by Mr. Nakajima. Thank you, question. As far as the crown that we have presented today is concerned, as I mentioned in the presentation, the crossover in the back of the stage that uses the brand new hybrid system, we call it a dual boost hybrid system. And this is the new hybrid system and that is the focus of this series of crown. The details will be explained by our engineers because they are waiting for you to visit uh, their location. So please ask a question to those each individual. As far as the powertrain for other crowns in the series, at this juncture, uh, I'm not allowed to share the details. But depending upon the region and the customers and their needs, the powertrain that is most suitable as a flagship crown will be considered. I mean, achieving carbon neutrality is one perspective. Fun to drive is another perspective that we keep in mind. And as the flagship, what is the powertrain needed for specific country and region? We intend to have such a powertrain as well. So please look forward to those future points to that from a design point of view. Uh, first of all, you know, carbon neutrality, it's often the conversation is about powertrain. But actually, there's a real necessity to start to investigate new materials, aerodynamic options, and other answers that add to the case of being able to lower carbon, uh, new, new carbon uh, emissions. So I think this is more than just powertrain. デザインの観点から不足してお答えしたいと思います。しばしばカーボンニュートラルに関するお話、話というのはパワートレインを中心に語られます。しかし実際のところは例えば素材を新たに開発するとか、あるいは空力特性の面でのオプションとか、そういったものが真に必要とされているわけでありまして、そういう他の措置を導入することによってさらに炭素の排出を減らすことができるんだということを付け加えておきたいと思います。Thank you very much, Mr. Ishii. Next person who has a question. The person the, from in the fourth row from the front. My name is Masatoshi from Nikan Kogyo Shinbun. In the presentation earlier, it was mentioned that as a global brand, there is going to be a challenge made in the global market. This time, in this timing, Crown is going to be challenged the global market. What is the target? What is the background of making this challenge in this timing? And right now, I think the Crown does not have a high global recognition. And so going forward, you'll need to make efforts to hire the recognition. What is your idea of promoting the brand strategy for the Crown? That would be another part of my question. Thank you, Ms. Masatoshi, for your question. I would like to respond to your question. Your question was about why is it that we are trying to promote the crown globally. Actually, in the past, the crown, though it was not in a huge volume, we have the experience or the history of introducing it in the world market, like Middle East, China, and other uh, mar markets and countries. Right now, it is not uh, being exported to other markets. That's the current situation. But as we have said earlier, Japan pride is a key word for us this time. The, we want to show Japan's crown is here. That kind of challenge we want to make, We're looking at the past history, all of the chief engineers, it was a dream for them. And we want to use our new weapon, TNGA, also the in-house company system, and uh, again, uh, attempt to make this uh, challenge once again. Going forward, we will have to ask uh, the opinions and the needs of each market uh, outside of Japan and whether uh, it will match their needs. Uh, we will be listening very carefully, and uh, we'd like to develop the crown so that it will be best in town. That is the idea. Again, I'd like to add a little bit to that. I think what is critically important to understand at the moment, in this point in time, is that the people who are looking for a prestige premium experience in the automobile market are incredibly diverse. 
私の方から再び補足をさせてください。今、このタイミングで理解しなければいけないこととして非常に重要なのは、自動車に関してプレスティージ、プレスティージですな、高級なプレミアムな体験というのを求めている人々というのは、非常に多様性に富んでいます。What's happening in Europe is actually quite similar. So, this is an incredibly good chance to convey the value and the increased diversity of what we've built into the next Crown series. といった性質はグローバルに日本以外でも共通して見られる特徴であるとも言えます。日本だけではなく中国、ヨーロッパ、その他の国々でやはりかなり多様性が見られています。ですので非常に良い機会、チャンスであるとも言えます。我々がこの新たなクラウンにおいて作り出した価値、バリュー、そしてその多様性というのを世界に伝えていくといういいチャンスだと思っています。正人様ありがとうございました。Thank you, Ms. Masatoshi. 質問ある方、挙手お願いいたします。Another person with a question, please raise your hand. The person up front in the room, please. 谷川 of Car Watch. Some days ago, President Toyoda. Mentioned that he has driven all the 15 generations of the crown, and the a new crown, after driving 15 generations of crown, it has evolved into four model variations, and that reflects the evolution achieved by Ever Better Cars and TNGA. Could you share with us what's behind that? Okay. Having this sort of a world premiere, once again, I realize that I truly, truly love Crown myself. I have that recognition. Many times I often ask, What sort of car do you drive? I use, you say, I drive compact cars and I drive different cars to sharpen my sensors. And I wasn't really aware that I, was, I loved Crown so much. But this time around, I now realize that Crown really. Carries a grave gravity for me personally. As Mr. Tanigawa has just mentioned, back in 1956, I was born, and since I was born in the garage, the, first gen the, the crown was parked there, starting with the first generation of the crown. And for the motorsports, when I felt the first hand experience of that, probably the second generation crown, that's when I felt first hand the motor. Sports. With that, at the Fuji Sport Speedway or Suzuka Circuit,、uh, I rode in the car on those race tracks. And so it was a crown that I experienced motorsports for the first time. So each crown carried the phase of my own life at the time, at any given time. And as I experienced that, my father and those people who were driving Crown, I felt how cool they are. I really felt they looked so cool. And after that, when I was working in Motomachi plant, the assistant manager、uh, was、uh, commuting in the Crown wearing business suits and looking at the assistant manager driving Crown. I felt a longed for Crown. And that, after that, I saw the cat. Tagline Someday a Crown. And at the same time, I kept saying, Let's make ever better cars. Now, we have presented four different variations. Crown may have had the driver image that it's a cool looking、uh, guy, but if a female one, the lady was driving the Crown, probably people thought, Well, she's driving、uh, her spouse's car. Or young guy driving the crown, probably people thought he's driving his father's car. But these four variations, crown, probably whoever the driver is, people will think they are driving their own crown. And I think we are presenting those different variations. Since I became president, I kept saying, let's make ever better cars. And the members with the 
towering department seated in both sides of this room. Uh, sometimes we passed across each other, but taking advantage of in-house company system and TNGA. To me personally, following the Corolla, I have been able to communicate well, better, with those members of the departments towering in the company. And that resulted in the crown that we have are presenting to you today. That's how I feel about it. But representing those towering departments, I'd like to invite those two engineers to respond to that question. Thank you, Mr. Tanyugawa. Well, representing the towering departments within or groups within Toyota, let me respond to that. As President said, let's make ever better cars. And honestly speaking, I couldn't fully understand what it meant. We thought we know greater details of the technology better than president. That may be arrogant, but that's how we felt. But about this crown, as I mentioned in my presentation, we presented idea for partially redesigning that. And according to the presentation, I told him he used very modest words, but actually he was quite harsh in responding to that redesign. And he asked, for what purpose are you developing the vehicle, probably you are trying to nurture and also extend the life of the car that we had developed. Uh, he made us uh, aware that probably we may not have been really focused on customers in developing our own cars, simply trying to extend the cars. So for the development of this crown, uh, he said that let's develop ever better crown, and he pushed us at the very leading edge of the development that expanded to the ever better crown and ever better models. So in the future, I will not allow the president to call us the towering departments as the lasting words from the department. Uh, I'd like to respond to that. <laughs> yeah, I still lose sleep when I think about that minor change. So. I think, you know, looking back, you know, the most important thing about that episode was that it was that, that Toyota-san, you know, the gentleman sitting next to me on the left here, gave us a good push from the back. And what it meant for us as designers was that we can break the rules if you want to. That's what he said to us. え、2番目の白いことから答えしたいと思います。で、あの前なチェンジというのは実はもう本当に眠れませんでした。で、振り返ってみますと、え、まさにこの左側に座ってらっしゃるトヨタのあの方ですけれども、あの方が私どもの背
May I ask a question as well? You talked about the towering department saying no to what they have to say. But when you saw this car and when you drove the car, how did you feel that this has become a better car? Did you really feel that? At the one on the left-hand side, that's what we really thought hard about it. At that time, the sedan market shrank significantly, we were told. We didn't think that way because the Crown itself has enjoyed significant uh, patronage in terms of the volume. But can we come up with a sedan that can replace a sedan? And as I mentioned in my presentation, the positioning of the Crown declined from the senior son in the family, but its role was taken by Alphard, which is minivan, and also the chauffeur-driven, um, changed to the chauffeur-driven vehicle. And in the case of minivan vehicles, not just the shape, but also the viewpoint is very good. And those people used to driving that. Do they really accept sedan, and how would they feel about that? As was mentioned in Nakajima-san's presentation, he talked about the new shape of new sedan. So we really had a hard time thinking it over, mulling it over. And going back to the very origin and looking back the history of 15 generations of the crown, it constantly took up a new challenge, the innovation and also listening to and meeting the needs of the customers, never going beyond that or exceeding, excess, being excessive. And that resulted in this form and sh shape and package. Now, how did I feel having driven that? I felt as if I'm driving a high uh, floor vehicle, but the entry and egress is very uh, easy. So I hope you look forward to that, whether this shape and package is uh, going to become popular, that's up to the customers to decide. But uh, we will offer a different shape and package for a long selling vehicle to really become sustainable. I think changing itself holds the key in that context. So, changing ourselves, taking up the challenge of uh, always pursuing something new has resulted in this crossover. But in the diversified world and society, the crown, I hope, uh, will be driven by many types of people, the diverse types of peoples, and expand this to the global scene really means that. And the Toyota dealership throughout the world uh, will be distributing this as a flagship vehicle. So in that sense, I would like many different people to drive this uh, car with pride and also great uh, interest. And in that sense, I think it's been completed in that package. Sorry for adding another question by myself. So I will go on to the next person, person in the front, please. I'm Nishimura from Transport Com Commentator. I'd like to ask uh, this question to President Toyota. Uh, you said that uh, it will be uh, it is common to what you have been saying, like standing by the person. And you said that after test driving the car, you said that is a crown. So can you uh, explain what is it that makes you think that it is a true crown? Well, this distinctive feature of crown will be very important to express, very difficult to express. If I have an answer, probably I don't. But as a driver, and also when I was a, a child, I had a lot of opportunities to ride the crown. And then in certain times, I was riding in the rear seat as a guest. So I have many touch points with the crown from before and to, up to today. So when I drive that with so much experience uh, and uh, to a test drive, sometimes I'll feel that it is a true crown, and sometimes I'll feel it is not. So it's not really a, a good answer for you, but that's how I felt. When I drive it, when I get on it, you can I just will sense if it is feels like a tr crown or if it is far apart from the true crown. That kind of conversation we've had many times for a long time and accumulate that kind of conversation. So maybe both of you have anything to add? 
Thank you, Nishimura san, for your question. It is very difficult to express what the distinctive feature of a crown is. We don't have a clear definition of what it is uh, that it is expressed in a crown. I guess it is from the customers who have cherished uh, the crown for long years, uh, what they appreciate, like the relaxing comfort, uh, maybe it's the comfortable drive. Uh, but anyway, it's not something that you can capture that uh, with digital analysis. Uh, so for for the chief engineers and ourselves, uh, we've driven it many times, uh, compared it with other vehicles, and tried to uh, determine whether we can be proud in saying that this is a true crown. Uh, so I hope that you will uh, test drive uh, too and see if you can find a crownness, a crownness in these new crown models. And please feed it back to us so that uh, we can use it for our next motivation. So I hope that you will cherish this for long years. You know, we thought long and hard about this from a design point of view, actually. and. Uh, the words challenge, dignity, uh, in the sense of, in Japanese, a hinkaku, yeah. And uh, also a very important point is, is attainable. For, for the average person, it's an attainable uh, product. And I think that uh, when you see Crown this time, what we try to put in design terms is not to let it get too overbearing, for it to be just handsome, to be, oh, that looks cool. And I think if you can find that measure, then you find what crown should be. はい、Another thing, if I would add, is I did say I don't have an answer now, but if it is something that is distinctive to Crown, I think a Crown has a certain form to it, like in uh, Kabuki. Uh, performances and in various forms of art from the very uh, early days from your uh, when you started to learn that art uh, you will first start uh, by learning the basics the basic format and then uh, you will embody that uh, format yourself and so when someone has uh, uh, achieved that format and then goes out of the box that will be taken as unorthodox performance but if you don't if you have not acquired that basic format and if you try to to be uh, ex uh, eccentric, then you'll just be thought as something baseless and formless. But probably the crown had its basic format, and therefore we were able to have an unorthodox, unconventional model change. And I don't know if other people will take that as unconventional, unorth unorthodox, but at least it will be a car that is going to make the challenge to be introduced in the uh, other markets outside of Japan. I think we're at a starting point. Thank you, Nishimura-san. Maybe I, invite, I invited people from this side too much, so probably let me move on to the different side. But I see fewer people with hands up on this side. Well, someone wearing a yellow shirt in the front row, please. Motor journalist, my name is Uchida. Congratulations for the premiere. Uh, let me ask about the design. You came up with uh, four different body types, each with a name crown. You, they are united with the same, but there must be the common design taste. So could you tell us about that? Uh, first of all, you know, the, what we wanted to achieve was to give each car a unique experience. You know, and from a design point of view, what that meant was translating that experience into form. はい、お答えしたいと思います。ご質問ありがとうございました。え、まず最初に私どもを達成したいと思いましたのは、それぞれの車に固有のユニークな経験を実現するということです。え、それデザインの観点から言いますと、きちんとした形で表すということでもあります
And the reason for that is that I want to create a situation where each car has an undeniable unique value to the customer. In other words, it's not a copy-paste situation. Uh, それはどういうことかと言いますと、例えば、伝統的なやり方でそれをやるとするならば、すべてのデザインが似たようなものになるということにもなります。しかし、今回の場合は、あえてそうではないという選択をいたしました。どういうことかと言いますと、その理由は、それぞれの車に関して、否定しがたい、消しがたい、ユニークな形、それからまた特徴を体現させたかったからであります。ユニークな価値をそこで表したかった。真似したようなものではないものにしたかったということです。And just one final point is actually最後の点ですけれども、えー、ヘッドランプの周りの、まあ、フロントをご覧いただきますと、確かにそこはすべての車検に関して一貫性がある形にしております。えー、しかしながら、最も重要なこと、最も我々は大切にしたことは、お客様の観点から見ていただくと、それぞれの車が 100% お客様が求めていらっしゃるものにするということです。内田様ありがとうございました Thank you, Mr. Uchida. Anyone with questions? Thank the third, third row person from the front. Shirai Ishi、uh, from Chunichi newspapers. From myself, I'd like to ask about the change of crown and about sedan. This time, the crown from a traditional sedan, including the powertrains and the vehicle type, we, the body type, we have seen a large change. So, why is the decision made in this timing?、Uh, so, I want to know the reasons of why you made this decision and also for the body type. Crossover sports SUV. We, I see a lot of SUV characteristics in、uh, some of these models, but you still have decided to maintain the sedan body type. So, what was there a specific reason s why you decided that way? Well, first of all, there was、uh, a report or article from your newspaper, Chunichi newspapers, that sedan is going to be discontinued. We have never talked about that, but、uh, you have created that article. But anyway, Thanks to your article, you have created a momentum or a movement toward、uh, continuing the sedan. And I have talked about this in my presentation, but、uh, sometimes the crown was、uh, becoming the, uh, uh, the young, younger brother but,、uh, in the company. But outside,、uh, in the public, there was a strong uh, uh, yearning、uh, for the crown、uh, model. And there was a lot of admir admir admiration left、uh, for the crown. And we never,、uh, Again, I repeat, we never said that we will discontinue the sedan body type. And today will be the official announcement that、uh, we will be continuing to have the sedan type. But having that rumor,、uh, hearing that rumor, made us recognize that there is high expectation toward the Crown model, and including the journalists and the media reporters, having your interest on the Crown and talking about the Crown. Was, is,、uh, was a trigger for us to make a re challenge with our crown. So I think you have created a good launch pad、uh, for us. Thank you. Thank you, Shirai san, for your question. I'd like to respond. So, why did we decide on the four body types and why、uh, do we see new、uh, powertrains、uh, from the past、uh, crowns this time? As I explained in my presentation today, we are now seeing diversifying values、uh, out in the public and society. And even Even looking at our history of Crown, we have always been making challenges and innovation. Body type and innovation、uh, is also included in this challenge and innovation. And also, uh, as uh, the President has said, we, Crown was a model that has continued to change with the times. That is why it's a long selling vehicle. And therefore, we started from、um, getting away of our preconceptions. That's where we started. And for the body types, this time we have decided、uh, to settle with these. For body types, but we have looked into various possibilities and we have consulted with、uh, Mr. Toyota with, about the、uh, various possibilities. But then uh, we have uh, uh, also done a good deal of discussion about what we're going to do with the mainstream sedan.、Uh, first of all, we I proposed、uh, the sedan minor change, but、uh, that was.
was uh, rejected. And usually it is a meeting to receive an approval at the meeting, but it was the first time that my proposal or a proposal that we made by the team would be uh, rejected. That was a big shock. But as uh, Toyota, Mr. Toyota said, uh, he has posed us the question, uh, think of the origin of Toyota Crown. What is Crown about? And so we uh, discussed about that, and that is why we came up with this Crown. Hatchback, wagon, sports SUV, estate, these uh, are the great names that we use uh, for the Crown, and the reason the, I have just explained why we have come up, settled with these four body types. But as we have been developing these vehicles, we had seen some changes, but I think it, it was from necessity. A Crown, uh, whether it is uh, having uh, meet the form uh, of the crown, uh, even if it goes out of the uh, form, coming uh, being unorthodox, being uh, in the basic uh, crown format uh, was important. And there's a various body types, power trains will have uh, various opinions, I believe. I hope that I can receive uh, your feedbacks. Thank you. Thank you, Shirai-san. The scheduled ending time is approaching, so uh, I would only invite two questions from here on. Person with a question, the person in white shirt in the front row, please. In the front row, in white shirt. Best car editor, Umeke is my name. Thank you very much for this opportunity earlier. Uh, the moderator asked the question, which implied the following. Why did you start with the crossover as the first model to be launched? And I'd like to confirm your thinking behind that first. I mean, you shared with us for different body types, but you're going to, to launch crossover as the first of the series. And following that, uh, when are you planning to launch those three remaining body types? That's what I would like to know. Now, you're going to achieve global expansion with us, introduce uh, the crown globally. Are you going to introduce all four body types globally? And in Japan, uh, eventually, all four body uh, types will be introduced. I mean, Hosoka-san, you're always ahead of the times, and we preempt our thinking. I mean, in the order of discussed internally, they will be launched, and that's the most honest answer. First of all, what we discussed thoroughly, what could replace the sedan, and then we came back to the origin and came up with a crossover, and we thought we shouldn't forget the sedan. So in my mind, I was thinking of these two body types. That was my personal view, but these two gentlemen by my side uh, from the mid-side vehicle company, everyone, they added two more body types. I mean, you are doing too much. You are trying to ride on my acceptance. And I actually said that you are trying to by my signing off for that. But that relates to what I kept on saying. Let's make ever better cars and creating TNGA, an in-house company system, the ability to build cars smartly. And it was their response uh, to include the engineering capabilities and also the production engineering capability. But the decision was made at a different time point. And as you already know, the developing vehicles require certain to lead time for each of the models. And therefore, as they were discussed internally in that order, they will be introduced one by one rather than launching them simultaneously. Now, uh, you might ask, why don't you introduce those separate ones? I mean, I would like to make sure that this 16th generation, the, the crown to be a great success in the world and would open the modern age for us to achieve the transformation of crown. We would like to explain that to our customers and to you all, first of all, so that customers will have options uh, to choose from uh, but after. A series of crowns will be introduced. So for each, as each of those body types are introduced, I hope you will add the excitement to that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Weki. So I would like to entertain the final question. The person with the white glasses in the third row from the front, please. I am Shinya Yamamoto, freelancer. The question that I want to ask is, 
Earlier in the presentation video, you said that uh, Crown is the first car that participated in the motorsports for Toyota. And for the new Crown, you said you're going to go back to the origin. And also, currently, Toyota is uh, trying to promote an ever better car making from motorsports. Is there, is these two things going to be fused? In other words, is this new crown going to be uh, uh, also be involved in motorsports? Well, for the fifth, for this generation, uh, my question is: Is there a possibility of uh, seeing a GR crown in the future? And another thing that I wanted to ask is: uh, In the entrance, there was the past uh, 15 generation crowns, and also the picture of the chief engineer. But here in the press conference, I don't see the chief engineer of this new crown. So that was a little bit strange to me. And my question is: Why is it that the chief engineer of this new crown is not uh, present here in at the podium? So I will start uh, by answering and the two gentlemen on my side can uh, uh, make additional comments. Well, probably uh, Shinya-san, uh, because we had the GR Yaris and GR Corolla, you might have expected to see a GR crown. So I think that is the background of your question of asking about uh, crown in motorsports. Well, first of all, for GR Yaris and GR Corolla, this, these two models, uh, it was the priority of Morizo. Mo Morizo's uh, a priority was on these two models. These, But this uh, crown is a flagship of the Toyota brand. And I myself have uh, three, four faces. Uh, Jama, a president, uh, a TMC president and CEO, also a Morizo a driver, a Morizo face. And this time, I'm taking on my hat as a president and CEO of uh, Toyota, TMC, and also as a 64-year-old uh, guy, uh, Akio Toyota. That is uh, the priority of when I make decisions on a crown. And so not I'm not looking at the crown uh, thinking of how I will drive with my racing suit. More, uh, I wanted to suit me uh, wearing my usual uh, business suits and also my casual clothes. I wanted to use it in that kind of my side. So uh, in the meantime, probably we will not be, uh, we do not have any plans to use it for motorsports. That's what uh, Morizo is thinking right now. But as you know, Toyota is a company that is far from obedient to what the president says. So from that sense, we don't know how it will turn out. And also what is done with these models, that is what uh, is the uh, decision is up to the chief engineers. And so uh, I don't know I for sure how it will turn out. But Morizo, as Morizo, that will be my opinion. And I will continue, that will continue to be my opinion as Morizo. And another question is, why is it that the chief engineer of this new crown is not participating in this uh, press conference and he was appearing just at the photo session? Before, uh, conventionally, uh, since there are four models, probably there were four chief engineers appearing and participating in the press conference as well. But this time, we did have four body types, but we had one chief engineer in charge of all four of the body types. And the reason why we created this chief engineer system is starting from uh, Ken Nakamura, Kenya Nakamura and uh, Karola's Hasegawa-san. These two gentlemen in the past has created the 10 rules of chief engineer for our chief engineer system. And this chief engineer system of Toyota inside our company, I believe it shows the skill itself. On the production side, the skill is expressed by the TPS. On the development side, uh, what is ex uh, expresses the Toyota skill is the chief engineer system. That is how I understand it. So for the past historic chief engineers, they have received their uh, evaluation and reputation after uh, they have completed uh, their work. And so in, in Toyota, the chief engineers will pass down and uh, receive and embody uh, the Toyota uh, philosophy, skill, and conduct. And I think the chief engineer system will be the essence of 
uh, the uh, master uh, uh, of this uh, uh, this conduct, and I think it is like a they are like the master of an art form. And before uh, in these kinds of new model presentations, uh, they will be the main presenter. And when the presentation was over, the seat, uh, chief engineer would just move on to the next model, and maybe the next afterwards. But I think that uh, that shouldn't be the way for this new model. Uh, like we have done in Crown, I want to have a person that will always uh, be prioritizing and uh, thinking and have an affection for this uh, vehicle. So, And hear the voices of the customer, be able to respond to the customer's needs and make the customers happy. I think that is uh, very necessary uh, for the Crown. So that is why, and that is the background on why the chief engineer is not uh, appearing in this press conference. But uh, you should, but the these cars uh, has been um, created by the leadership of the chief engineers. I hope that uh, you will all uh, understand that, even though he is not present here. And uh, the space for him to embody uh, his work are the executives uh, sitting here. Currently, the chief engineer system, after turning into an in-house company system, we have been able to return to the original form of the chief engineer system when it started. That's what I believe. So I hope that going uh, after this, uh, we do have a explanation session by the chief engineer uh, next to the actual car. So you can ask him tough questions so that uh, the chief engineer uh, will have a hard time. That's my request. And so are you okay? No additional comments? Thank you very much, Yamamoto-san. I'm sure that uh, there were uh, more people who wanted to ask uh, questions, but uh, since the scheduled time uh, has uh, come, I would like to uh, say that we would like to close this session. Uh, thank you very much uh, for staying with us until the end.